On this episode of Hot Lap, we're taking this 1983 convertible Fox body back to the future for a great cause. Hey, what's up guys? Justin with AmericanMuscle.com and boy, do we have a video for you here today. Now, I'm really excited to be standing next to this 83 V6 carbureted convertible Fox body. Why? Well, let me give you some backstory. If you're a fan of the channel or a fan of the brand, then chances are you've seen some of our past builds with Make-A-Wish, where we've redone young Jonathan's New Edge and even young Austin's S197. Some of our sister sites have redone a couple of Jeeps in addition to a truck. So we've done probably five or six builds for deserving Make-A-Wish kids in addition to raising over $300,000 for the charity. And that's why I'm standing next to this Fox body here today. You see, this car belongs to a young man named Matt from the Philadelphia area. Now Matt's just like any other high schooler out there, right? Likes to hang out with his friends and loves football, except with one big exception. Matt recently underwent a heart transplant at the young age of 17, and it's something he's going to have to deal with for the rest of his life. So when Make-A-Wish reached out to us asking if we would help with his Fox body, of course we said yes. This thing actually belonged to Matt's grandmother and uh, basically sat in the garage and was passed down to Matt with about 30,000 miles on it. It's got about 50,000 miles on it now and a couple small dings and dents on this thing, but the point is we want to make this thing worthy of cruising for Matt and his buddy, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to turn this thing into a pretty damn cool Fox body convertible, but we can't leave that V6 under the hood, right? Who would like that? So enter this guy right here. That's right, guys. Gen 2 Crate Coyote backed by a brand new 6R80 transmission that we're gonna shoehorn into that. I'm really excited because this is our first Coyote swap into a Fox body for the channel, so we're gonna be experiencing this together. And uh, guys, we've got a kind of a tight timeline here because the goal is to have all of this done and revealed at our 11th annual American Muscle Mustang show. So got a couple of months to get this all done. It's gonna be tight, but knowing us, we'll get it done. So Matt, this one's for you, buddy. Hope you enjoy it. Well guys, as promised, uh, first step is yanking out this crusty old carbureted V6 with Joe here to make room for the new transplant. And uh, yeah, this thing's kind of grimy. Ready? I can try to pull it up as we come out. <clears throat> oh! Well, after a little bit of a fight and a whole lot of fluid on poor Joe's floor here, the carbureted V6 is now out on a crate and we have a bunch of room for activities. I don't know, it actually looks pretty big in there. So hopefully that's the case when we go to lower that new engine and transmission in. Next step, getting rid of a bunch of the stuff we don't need anymore. In addition to the engine bay stuff, Joe also yanked out carpet seats, interior goodies. There's probably one to 200 parts laying on the floor that used to be in this thing, but then everything has to go back together again. So hopefully Joe has been diligent with his label maker. No, he's saying no, but uh, knowing him, it's going to come back together very, very well. Now we have to push this thing out into the trailer, get it off to paint. But the good thing is it should be nice and light here with no moda. All right, guys, well, here she is back from paint, obviously stage one of paint because the car is not nearly completed yet, but here's what's going on. Our friends at Iron Hill sprayed the bay for us because they didn't want us chipping up that fresh paint job, working around the car, things like that. Makes total sense, I get it. We wanna get the motor and trans mocked up in this thing, but we're still missing our K member. It should be here any day now. So in order to keep this thing moving, Joe's gonna get the car in the air. We're gonna yank out that seven and a half rear end in this thing. In addition to that fuel tank, get those out of the way. We have a fresh 8.8 over there for him. And drop the front suspension as well, knowing that that Maximum Motorsports K member should should be here any minute now. So time to start getting to work on this thing because Joe's got a long way to go. I'm just helping. I don't set that anywhere. It's a little bit of a bitch. So am I, so it's all right. All right guys, so I'm currently holding my member K member that is, thanks to our friends at Maximum Motorsports. And now we're getting ready to bolt this puppy in. We are gonna drop the motor in from the top. We did some measuring. It didn't look like it was gonna go from the bottom with the sway bar bracket still in place. Joe's got the bolts. This thing ain't getting any lighter, so let's do it. 
Hold tight, Mr. Dugan. Oh, we good, man. I go to the gym. Here we are dropping the engine in, or at least trying to, right? Our first attempt was basically to mock it up, see where we'd have any issues. Joe clearance that on the firewall. Now we have the transmission on, we have the headers on because it's really the only way to go about that. However, it makes dropping it in from the top a pain in the you know what. We tried dropping the whole deal in with that K member in, just didn't look like it was gonna go. So now here we are, K members back out. Got a lot more room to play, but it's gonna make getting the engine in and the K member up kind of a little interesting dance, as Joe was saying. Well, guys, after a lot of grunting, moving around, the engine is finally in. This size of engine and transmission was obviously never meant to go in something as small as a Fox body, and it shows when you do go to bolt this thing up for the very first time or fifth time, as was the case with us. Cook supplied us with these headers to fit a Fox Coyote swap car with a 6R80. Next up, we're gonna move on to suspension. Joe just finished up welding in all of the torque box reinforcements, painted everything, it looks great. You guys know these Fox bodies are basically made out of tin foil. So about 400 wheel on tap is gonna twist this thing like a pretzel. Stifler's cross member is in place for the transmission. Everything lines up, looks great. So now it's time to start hanging some suspension because we've got to make this thing a roller. We got to get it off to paint because we are running out of time. So we got some control arms. BMR uppers are already in place. I am currently holding the lowers. We also got some iBox stuff going on here. As you can see, they also hooked us up some really killer parts, including a badass set of coilovers up front, which you guys will see in a minute. But we're going to concentrate on this rear end. So let's go. Paging Joe, rear axle time. All right, guys, so we got all of the shiny new goodies underneath the rear end, which leads us to wheels. This had a seven and a half inch rear end, obviously something that you don't see a lot and something that certainly is not going to withstand the power of that Coyote. So ideally, yes, 94 to 98 would be where we would want to be. However, we couldn't find one in the timeline we needed. So we got an 8.8 .8 under here now from an SN95, which it seems like an S197 wheel is going to be the way to roll. A uh, higher positive offset is really what we're gonna be looking for here without doing a whole bunch of cutting. We got an SN wheel here just to see how it's gonna fit, but this should be interesting testing these out. These won't even fit over the hub. All right, remember that whole part where I said the S197 wheel would fit a lot better than the SN95 wheel? Well, guess what? I was wrong yet again. What we're looking at here is an SN95 new edge wheel, 17 by eight plus 30 offset. And yes, it does poke a little bit, but it actually looks really good. This is not the wheel we're obviously gonna use, right? But we're just getting a sense of what is going to work here with this car, with that SN95 rear axle. It's gonna be kind of a hodgepodge of wheel fitment, but Matt, don't worry, buddy. We are gonna make it look good for you. Let's talk suspension. We can actually cruise up front real quick. Stan, let's check it out. Really nice stuff from our friends at Eibach. They hooked this up with their Eibach Pro Street S coilovers. You can also get a better sense for all the Maxima Motorsports goodies in here as well. We got the A-arms in place, uh, the knuckles, obviously. We don't have the bump steer kit in yet. It's coming together. Again, this thing is gonna be a roller here by the end of the day. I mean, it's really coming a long way in a short period of time. Motor and trans is in, rear ends in, suspension's in. So next step is to wheel this puppy into our trailer, ship it on down to Iron Hill paint and body, get it loaded up. Well, here it is, guys. Check this new color out. Randy down at Iron Hill absolutely killed it for us. This is tuxedo black because it's just such a killer color. A lot of flake in this thing once you get it out in the sun. As you can see now, we do have a Cervini's cow hood on the car. And if you guys are paying attention, you'll notice this is now an 85 to 86 style front bumper because for iFoxes, these front bumpers are just the way to roll. They look so much better. Obviously no interior in the car yet, no brakes on the car yet. Gotta run new EFI fuel lines, gotta run brake lines, gotta do power steering lines, you get the point. I need to stop talking and keep it moving. Joe's been working really hard 
running brake lines, pretty much all plumbed. Bear really, really hooked it up on the brakes. Absolutely beautiful setup. So power steering, let's talk about that. Power by the hour, we've had them on speed dial during this build because they make some really killer parts for Coyote Swap Fox body setups, including their accessory kit, which is basically put power steering where the alternator should go on a Coyote car, and then puts the alternator basically 180. We want to run a front sway bar on this car, and basically without doing that, it just wasn't working. We got SR Performance front and rear sway bars for this thing with the drop brackets from an SN95. Now it's fuel time. We got all the fixings needed for a return style system for this setup, which is a must. I got a brand new tank. We're getting closer and closer, actually firing this thing up. I can't wait. All right, guys, in this installment of what Joe has been up to lately, well, what hasn't he been up to with this car? They don't really make one piece or complete custom exhaust systems for your Coyote Swap Fox body, which means what you're currently looking at is his handiwork here because we have to go around the 6R80, that's Stifler's cross member, back into our two and a half inch cat back, a couple of Magnaflow mufflers before going out the back of the car. Uh, we also have one piece drive shaft in place, thanks to Lee and the gang over at DSS for building us a custom piece. Uh, we also have a ton of work to do inside the car as well. Shocker there, right? If you ever thought about Coyote swapping your Fox body, great, but just be prepared for an S slow to work. I'm gonna let Joe kind of burn the rest of this together. Killer work, buddy. Uh, it's gonna sound awesome, Matt. I'm sure you're gonna be loving this, bud. As you can see, it's looking a little closer to completion. Andrew and Joe have been doing a lot of wiring on this thing. I've actually just finished up the stereo system, which in and of itself was a chore here with an 83 engine. I think we're about to find out if it's working or not. We haven't started this thing yet. So Joe, you want to do the honors, brother? Key her on. It actually kind of idles too. Awesome, man. Well, there you go, she runs, that's awesome, she's alive. We're in a good spot. Now we have to kind of finish up a few things and get this thing off to upholstery because that top is in desperate need of replacement. And plus we're gonna change up the color a little bit more. That white just really isn't working here. So get this thing kind of as prepped as we can and roll out the door, which means we gotta put some new wheels and tires on this. And I'm really excited to show you what we have in store there. And the cherry on top are the Forge Star F14s. Look at that, Vince from Forge Star. And he delivered with a custom set of wheels and tires in charcoal and they turned out beautifully. Up front here, we had to go with a 17 by eight and a half plus 35 offset. Pretty flush with the front fender, looks mint wrapped in the Nitto Mativo here all season tire again because Matt's gonna be dailying this thing if you can believe it. The rear wheel setup on the other hand is actually from an S197. So it's actually a 17 by nine and a half plus 44 is the offset there. And that is just perfect with that new edge rear axle that we have in the car. Getting ready to put this thing on the trailer, go out to upholstery and then it's crunch time. We're only two weeks away from the show. <sighs> we got a long way to go. So stop yapping and get this thing bolted up. All right, there you go. So Joe and I just finished up installing the new front bumper here on Matt's Fox body. Also, you might have noticed that new top is now in place. Fresh black vinyl top, kind of keeping with that all black look that Matt really wanted. Goes really nice with the Forge Stars. Start moving on the interior and check that out. Check that out, huh? Matt's Fox body is officially a functioning convertible once again. M&A upholstery, they did the top, but also recovered both front and rear seats for us. Black vinyl with that maroon stitching or piping really matches the interior well. Brand new dash pad, of course, new heater core because Fox body, uh, brand new carpet, which was desperately needed by the way. Joe actually fabbed up this custom box here to cover the low car shifter. And at that point, M&A wrapped it in vinyl. Brand new stereo, which I actually did. And of course, Dakota Digital hooking us up with their new gauge pack for the Fox body. Topped all off with a brand new Momo T. 
tuner wheel. Seats are comfy. This has road trip written all over it. But now we want to verify the power of this Gen 2 Coyote. So we're going to call up our friends from Lone Racing, get this thing on the dyno, get her strapped down, make our pull, and see how she's running. All right, guys, so we just finished up the second of two dyno runs. Now, after our revision from John Jr., car is making right on the money for what a Gen 2 Coyote should be making. 388 horsepower, 361 pound-feet of torque to the tires, more than enough to have fun in a little Fox body like this. So what do you say we get it out on the street? All right, and we're off. The maiden voyage here in Matt's Fox body. And the car feels awesome. I mean, it sounds great. Speaking of which. <laughs> Ooh, that surprised the hell out of me. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> if I had that reaction, having driven countless high horsepower Mustangs, Lord only knows what little Matt's in for for this one. Do that again. Oh my god. Dude, this thing rips. Oh, that's awesome. Now there's only one more thing to do, right? I mean, we've determined this thing runs pretty damn good. Time to get it to the show and see what Matt's thinking about this thing, man. I hope he likes it. Matt, we're coming for you, buddy. Well, here it is, guys. Moment of truth. The time has come to finally unveil Matt's Fox body here at our 11th annual American Muscle Mustang show. I got butterflies, man. I'm nervous. I hope he likes this thing. But now, time to yank this cover off and show him what's up. Uh, this is Matthew. Matt was recently had a full heart transplant in Philadelphia. So Make-A-Wish asked Matt what he wanted for, for a wish. And Matt said, ah, there's probably somebody more deserving. And then when they asked him again, he said, you know what? My, my grandmother gave me this 35-year-old Mustang. If you guys could just pull the dents out of it and maybe paint it black, that would be great. As you can imagine, not a chance we were stopping at painting it black and pulling the dents out, and Matt deserves a hell of a lot more than that. One, two, three. Get out of here! Stop! Yeah, stop! Come on! <laughs> So when this thing came to us, a carbureted V6, whopping 112 horsepower, I believe. So we'll see how she sounds. That's some V6, isn't it? In place of that carbureted V6, you have yourself a brand new Ford Performance 435 horsepower Coyote Crate engine, sir. So you have the 435 horsepower Ford Performance Gen 2 Coyote Crate engine. And behind it, it's a 6R80, brand new automatic transmissions. Ford Star built us a custom set of wheels for it. This is an F14. Massive bear brakes behind it because if you have 435 horsepower on tap, you need to stop, right? In a couple words, what are you thinking? I, I don't have words to describe how, how amazing this is, how I've been, and thank you so much, guys. All right, guys, one more time, everybody, again, for Matt, the Make-A-Wish team. Well, after the last couple of months of thrashing on the car, early mornings, late nights, blood, sweat, and tears, and a few choice four-letter words, Matt's Fox body is finally wrapped up. And I tell you guys, there is nothing like pulling that cover off for the very first time and seeing the massive smile on Matt's face. It makes everything worth it, and it really just puts things in perspective a little bit more. This build really couldn't have happened without a few key people and key vendors. Of course, first and foremost, Big Joe turning the wrenches. That guy is just wise beyond his years and is a true craftsman when it comes to building the car like that. Also want to thank Stan and Andrew Fleming again for helping out, Andrew especially with the wiring. Randy from Iron Hill Paint and Body, obviously getting that thing looking right, spraying that tuxedo black paint job and just helping out in the final hours. m and Upholstery for getting that top and interior looking perfect after 30 plus years of abuse. And of course, a few key vendors, Lund Racing for getting the car running great. Frank and Christian from Power by the Hour answering the dozens of our questions in regards to the swap itself. In addition to Cooks, Magnaflow, BBK, 
Ford Star. Vince, thanks again for the wheels. Bear brakes hooking us up. Those massive brakes. Cervini's giving us that killer hood in addition to Dakota Digital and other key vendors as well. This really did take an army to make it what it was. And at the end of the day, the car was a huge success. So thank you guys again. We hope you enjoyed the build. I know I did. It was certainly a very awesome one for us here at AM. Thanks for watching guys. Remember for all things Mustang, keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com.